He's there for us.
fighting for us God is on our side He has overcome, yes He has overcome We will not be shaken We will not be moved Jesus, you are here God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He has overcome, yes, He has overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus you are here, carrying our burdens, carrying our shame, He has overcome, yes, He has overcome, we will not be shaken, we not be moved, Jesus you are here, and I will live, I will not die, the resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. Carrying our shame, He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am. Fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies. Shout it out, shout it out I will live, I will not die The resurrection power of Christ Alive in me And I am free in Jesus' name I will live, I will not die I will declare And I am healed in Jesus' name 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 rises in the morning than the sun and more that shines in the night than just the moon it's more than this fire here that keeps me warm in a shelter that is larger than this room and 
There's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment And a music higher than the songs that I can sing The stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things So if I stand, let me stand on the promise That you will pull me through And if I can't let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you And if I sing, let me sing for the joy that is born in me these songs And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his home Dances on the prairies than the wind More that pulses in the ocean than the tide There's a love that's fiercer than the love between friends More gentle than a mother's when a baby's at her side And there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiments and a music higher than the songs that I can sing The stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things So if I stand, let me stand on the promise That you will pull me through And if I can That first brought me to you And if I sing, let me sing for the joy That is born in me these songs And if I weep, let it be as a man Who is longing for his home And if I stand Stand on the promise that you will pull me through And if I can't let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you And if I sing, let me sing for the joy that is born in me
Kau Tuhan di hidupku Kau berikan hidup yang baru Tarahmu menyucikan Pulihkan hatiku Ku nyatakan kau lah segalanya Engkau sumber pengharapan 
kuasamu sanggup menyembuhkan jiwaku pemberserahannya kepadamu Yesus kaulah segalanya Salimu, 
I hope and pray that you are fine and I want you to know that even though we are all going through a very challenging time, God will see us through because He is a God who is greater than the challenges in our lives. And also today I want to let you know that your leaders are thinking about you and praying for you. If you have a need, do contact us. Now, I want to read us a portion of scripture that is very familiar this morning for our meditation and devotion. So it's taken from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 9. Let me read. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. These are the words of Paul to the Philippians. And there are four things that I would like us to, or remind us to do uh, this coming week. All right. The first is to pray. Let us continue to pray and presenting our request to our Father God and let us pour our hearts to Him and unload our cares, our burdens and our fears in the place of prayer. God cares for us. He is familiar with all our ways and He, will, he knows what we need even before we ask. I would also like to encourage all of us to practice the presence of God by talking to Him and listening to Him as we go through uh, our day. Alright, so that's point number one. Number two, we give thanks to God. Let us remember to give thanks to God every day, always. Okay, for this is the will of God for us. Use this period of time to cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving. Alright, let's, let's infuse time, thanksgiving into our activities every day. Alright, before we eat, before we sleep, as we walk around the house, all right, as we send a text to someone, let's just um, give thanks to God for all that He has already done for us and also the things that He will do for us. Amen? And the third thing, think of praiseworthy things. Now, I, I want to encourage all of us, especially myself, to intentionally think and meditate on the Word of God. Yeah, let's use this time to memorize the Word of God. Think of God's love for us and His care for us. Yeah? And uh, God's peace will guide our hearts. And also, most importantly, to think about how we can be a blessing to others. And finally, to put all these thoughts, positive thoughts, into action, especially to be a blessing to those that we know. All right? Perhaps sending an encouraging text uh, to a friend. Um, or perhaps helping a brother financially or give a call to someone to cheer them up. 
All right, so this week, let's remember to do these four things. Number one, to pray. Number two, to give thanks. Number three, to think about praiseworthy things. And number four, to be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you that you are a faithful God. Lord, teach us to pray continually, give you thanks, and also uh, to think about praiseworthy things and be a blessing to others. Lord, we pray that as we connect ourselves with you, may you uh, minister your grace, your healing to our lives, O oh God, and strengthen us so that we can do um, be a blessing and do the works that you have for us out of the overflow of our hearts and your strength. God, for we, we remind ourselves that it is not by might nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we commit ourselves to you individually, uh, as a church and as a nation. Lord, may you watch over us and may you cover us with your protection. We pray and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Here are the announcements for this week. If you are new to our church, do get in touch with us and get connected with us via our church Facebook, YouTube or website. I would also like to encourage all of us to join us uh, at our midweek prayer meeting uh, on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Let's come together to call upon the name of the Lord and to present our requests to Him. He hears us. And now let us worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Uh, here is the bank account that you can transfer your fund to. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you that you are a faithful Father. You will provide for every need, O oh God, in our lives. And we are not worried because you are in control. You are seated on the throne and you can provide for every need in our lives. So Father, we ask God that you will give um, the leaders of the church the wisdom and the knowledge to know how to use these tithes for the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And before Pastor Elvin shares the Sunday message, let us have a look at a video clip of the Bahasa Fellowship in our church. Shalom Sidang Jemaat FPBC sekalian. Nama saya Nicholas. Saya bersama-sama dengan rakan-rakan saya, Pastor Gias dan juga Ribon yang kini sedang menjalani praktikum di FPBC. Di kesempatan ini, saya ingin memaklumkan kepada Sidang Jemaat bahwa kami telah memulakan kelompok sel dalam sidang bahasa. Ini adalah menyahut seruan Pastor Alvin sendiri yang berhasrat untuk melihat jemaat yang selesa berbahasa Malaysia untuk terus bertumbuh di dalam Tuhan. Hasratnya itu telah dikongsikan kepada Saudara Franklin dan Saudara Franklin akhirnya menceritakan kepada kumpulan kami yang menjalani praktikum di MPBC dan akhirnya Uh, kami telah mengambil inisiatif untuk memulai kelompok sel dalam sidang bahasa. Kami telah menghubungi Ibu Eva untuk meminta persetujuan mengadakan kelompok sel di rumahnya. Dan Ibu Eva sangat berbesar hati dan mempelawa kami untuk mengadakan persekutuan di rumahnya. Pada 22 Februari yang lalu, kami telah memulakan persekutuan yang pertama yaitu kami bermula daripada lima orang yaitu saudara Franklin sendiri kami bertiga dan ibu Emma sendiri selepas itu pada minggu berikutnya kami juga disertai oleh saudari yaitu ibu Meliana Panjaitan dan beliau juga pernah membawa suaminya bersama dengan beliau jadi seminggu sebelum PKP kami juga disertai oleh seorang uh, lelaki Amerika yang bekerja di Pulau Pinang dan beliau uh, boleh berbahasa Malaysia namun belum fasih tetapi beliau ber berkata ingin belajar bahasa Malaysia dengan lebih lagi beliau adalah seorang Kristian dan beliau uh, mendatangi kami ketika itu kami berada di Tesco dan sejak itu 
kami berkenalan dan akhirnya Pastor Gias mengajaknya untuk menyertai kelompok sel kami dan beliau sempat menyertai kelompok sel kami seminggu sebelum PKP Sel, uh, dalam masa PKP ini juga kami masih mengadakan uh, persekutuan melalui aplikasi Zoom dan uh, kami uh, terus menerus mendorong satu sama lain berkongsi firman Tuhan dan kami terus mendoakan satu sama lain jadi aktiviti yang kami lakukan adalah seperti menyanyi memuji Tuhan di dalam dengan lagu-lagu dalam bahasa Malaysia kami juga berkongsi firman Tuhan, kami juga ber, berkongsi beban, masalah dan saling menggunakan masa itu untuk saling mendoakan dan mendorong satu dengan yang lain. Jadi untuk itu, kesempatan ini juga saya ingin mengajak sekiranya ada jemaat di FPBC yang selesa berbahasa Indonesia untuk menyertai kumpulan kami. Sekiranya ada yang berminat, Anda boleh uh, menghubungi Uh, nombor yang akan kami berikan di hujung video ini nanti jadi untuk itu kami mengucapkan terima kasih kepada pihak gereja FBBC karena prihatin dan juga membenarkan kami mengadakan kelompok sel ini sekian terima kasih Tuhan memberkati Shalom Church, a very blessed morning to all of you. Before we open the word of God this morning, I want to lead us in the word of prayer. Let's do that. Dear Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you God that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, your word is like a jar of bottomless treasure. And it has a voice for us, O oh God, for every season of our lives. Your word corrects us when we lose our way. Your word nourishes us. Your word encourages us when we are down. So Father, as we uh, listen to your word this morning, I pray, O oh God, for attentive ears. And I also pray for obedient hearts, O oh God, that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word as well. For all these, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As I was seeking God for a message for us today, God gave me a picture in my mind. And in this picture, I saw people building an aeroplane runway and I saw excavators digging and breaking the ground. I saw the excavators unearthing things inside the ground, clearing up the debris and trash and they put in layers and layers of tarmac and finally the runway is ready. And I saw at the wayside there was a big aeroplane that was ready to take off. Today, I entitled my message, Clearing Up the Trash of Our Past. By saying trash, I mean bad choices or mistakes that we have made in the past, sins that we have committed, that we still live by its consequences today. They come back and haunt us again and again. And the scripture text that we will be looking into this morning is from Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 48. Luke chapter 7 is a narrative, which means it is a story. And in this story, there are three main characters, Jesus 
an unnamed woman, and also Simon the Pharisee. Both the persons, the woman and Simon, have trash in their lives. The woman's trash was her past. She suffered from guilt and shame from the sins that she had committed before. And for Simon, his trash has got to do with his attitudes. He makes poor judgment of people. And Simon had a bad vision problem. Now, my brothers and sisters, if we are honest with ourselves, we all have trash in our lives. And if we don't deal with the trash in our lives, they can come back and haunt us again and again, relentlessly. And it can inhibit our growth. It affects our mental health, our emotional health, as well as our spiritual health. Now, before further ado, we want to look into the text this morning and uh, let me read the text to you. Luke chapter 7, verses uh, 36 to 48. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, said Simon. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and another 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has never stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her love has shown. But whoever has forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Now, it is very important for us to understand the background of the story before we dive into this passage. Because by understanding the context or the background, it gives us a fuller picture of what's really happening uh, at that time. Now, there is a missing part in the story. The missing part was not recorded in the Gospel of Luke but it was, it was recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. It is very important for us to look at two passages. We combine both of them together, we superimpose them to get a full picture of what uh, the, the author is trying to tell us here. Now, if we look at the, the Luke's Gospel, it tells us that Jesus was in the city of Nain. 
And in that city, Jesus was followed by a large crowd. And at that time, Jesus already performed many, many miracles. And when Jesus saw uh, people carrying a dead body, uh, Jesus went by because he saw um, a widow was weeping uh, so badly because uh, her son had just died. And Jesus raised him from the dead. And because of the miracle that Jesus had done, many people had believed in him. Some have said that Jesus was a prophet that has risen, that has been sent by God to the people. But even though the people believe, the Pharisees have doubts about Jesus. Now we go into the missing part of Luke's Gospel, which is found in Matthew chapter 11, 20 to 30. So in Matthew chapter 11, 20, Jesus pronounced woes to three cities. The three cities are named Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Why did Jesus pronounce woes to these three cities? Because they were unbelief there. Jesus said that if the miracles that had been performed in these three cities were performed in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. Now, the next part of the story in Matthew chapter 11, it talks about Jesus praising his Father in heaven. He said that the knowledge of God was hidden from the wise, means hidden from the learned and from the Pharisees, the religious elites. But God revealed them to children. And then come this very famous part of the scripture, which uh, we often like to quote, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, it says, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. There are bookmarks, picture frames. Uh, people highlight this verse in the Bible. I believe that this verse can be used in general because it's an open invitation by Jesus. By Jesus. But originally, this verse was made reference to this unnamed woman. This unnamed woman was carrying a heavy load of burden. And this invitation was given by Jesus to free her from her burden of a sinful past. Now we go into the scripture that uh, we are interested to uh, expose it today, which is uh, Luke chapter 7 from verses 36 onwards. Let me read to you. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. We must understand the context here. Earlier, we discovered from the background of the story that many people in the crowd believed Jesus. They believed that Jesus was from God. But the Pharisees, including Simon, or possibly Simon was one of them, who didn't quite believe that Jesus was from God. Now, it suggests to us here that Simon's invitation to his house was actually not cordial. And it was later confirmed that the invitation was not so welcoming because Jesus was not given water to wash his feet like what they would normal, normally do for an honourable guest. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating in the Pharisee's house. So she came with an alabaster jar of perfume. A woman in that town lived a sinful life, learned that Jesus was there, and she came to the house. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life. To be called a sinful woman in the town, it is actually not very nice. 
it suggests that the woman might be a prostitute. She was already known for her sinful past. She was labeled. But this woman came uninvited. Perhaps she was amongst the crowd that saw Jesus perform the miracles. Perhaps she also heard the call of Jesus saying, Come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. And she was desperate. She wanted that rest so much. Just imagine the shame that she was carrying to be the talk of the town. She was scorned, disdained, looked down upon, and she was treated like a trash, and there is no dignity at all. But this woman, this woman was unashamedly courageous. She had a nothing to lose attitude. She barged into people's party. It takes quite a bit of courage to do that, isn't it? I think very few people would show that kind of enthusiasm or courage to pursue Jesus that way. But the woman did. And the Bible says that she stood behind Jesus at his feet, weeping. Now we got to picture this in our mind. She stood behind Jesus. She didn't say a word. Maybe with her head looked down, with her hands clasped. And she just broke into tears. And she began to wet the feet of Jesus with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair. She was pouring tears of grief. So much tears that they wet the feet of Jesus. She was probably shocked and embarrassed. And reflex action caused her to use whatever she had to wipe the feet of Jesus. And because she had a long hair, she used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. Now there is a likelihood that the feet of Jesus was dusty. Because people in those days, they walk on roads that are made of clay and gravel. That's why it is customary in the Jewish culture, when the guests come into your house, you get your servant to bring a pail of water to wash the feet of your visitors. And this woman wiped the feet of Jesus as a sign that Jesus is honored. Jesus was honored by her. And then she kissed the feet of Jesus and poured perfume on them. Now the kissing here is not sensual, but it is customary. Apostle Paul and Peter use this phrase, greet each other with a holy kiss. So it is customary in the Jewish culture to maybe give a peck in the cheek. But this woman uh, didn't kiss the, the cheek of Jesus. She kissed her feet instead. Perhaps she felt undeserving to kiss the, the cheek of Jesus. And then the Bible says that she poured perfume because she carried with her an alabaster jar of perfume. Some Bible use the word expensive, expensive perfume. It is nonetheless costly at that time for doing that. It is also a sign that Jesus was so deserving to her. It is a sign of her worship, her adoration for Jesus. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw he had said to himself, when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, 
he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. That Pharisee is Simon. Simon, of course, he was there. And when he saw Jesus' action, he was appalled. He was shocked. Why would Jesus allow a sinful woman to touch him? Now it confirmed all that I have taught all along that Jesus was a phony. And Jesus broke his silence. He said, Simon, I have something to tell you. Simon said, tell me, teacher. And then Jesus began to tell him this parable. And this parable was really full of punches. Jesus said, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii or 500 pieces of silver. And the other owed 50. Neither of them had money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. Jesus said, you have judged correctly. Then Jesus turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. Means you do not honor me. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head. But she has poured perfume on my feet. Simon, do you see this woman? Do you really see this woman? Jesus was talking to Simon about making right judgments about people. Simon, do you see this woman's heart? You have judged wrongly. You have made wrong judgment about this woman. In another words, Jesus was saying, Simon, you have a vision problem. Simon was very quick to judge. Perhaps he was also very critical. And this kind of attitude or behavior might be caused by hurts or bitterness that Simon had carried from the past. We don't know, the Bible didn't say, but this is a possibility. People who are like Simon could be very unforgiving and full of resentment. And that itself is also a trash. And this trash could be very, very deadly. Now, a story was told about a woman who went to her pastor and said she wanted to quit her church. The story goes like this. A lady went to her pastor and said, Pastor, I won't be going to your church anymore. The pastor responded, But why? The lady said, Ah, I saw a woman gossiping about another member, a man that is a hypocrite, the worship team living wrong, People looking at their phone during service. Among so many other things wrong in your church. The pastor replied, Okay, but before you go, please do me a favor. Take a full glass of water and walk around the church three times without spilling a drop on the ground. Afterwards, leave the church if you desire. The lady thought, too easy. She walked three times round the church as the pastor had asked. 
When she finished, she told the pastor she was ready to leave. Then the pastor said, Before you leave, I want to ask you one more question. When you were walking around the church, did you see anyone gossiping? The lady replied, No. Did you see any hypocrites? The lady replied, No. Anyone looking at their phones? No. You know why? No. You were focused on the glass to make sure you didn't stumble and spill any water. It's the same with your life when you keep your eyes on Jesus. We don't have time to see the mistakes of others. We will reach out a helping hand and lend them and concentrate on our own walk with God. Now, Jesus was actually talking about Simon's poor judgment or vision problem. And this poor judgment and vision problem can be solved by focusing on Jesus. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, to focus our mind or to fix our eyes on right things. He said, finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think of such things. Think of good things, beautiful things. Now, my brothers and sisters, no matter how bad things are or how bad people are, we can always train our eyes to see good in any situation or see good in people. We can train our minds to think about only good things. We can train our mouth to consider saying good things about people. All this can be trained. Jesus is the only lens through which we see beautiful things in life. It is true that we gain right perspectives about life when we invite Jesus into our daily life. It is also true that Jesus is the only lens through which we can see beauty in not so beautiful people. Let's continue. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever, whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. My brothers and sisters, I tell you what Jesus saw in that woman. Jesus saw a changed person. Jesus saw a sinner that had turned into a saint. Jesus saw love. Jesus saw devotion. Jesus saw worship in her heart. Jesus saw a potential in this woman. And Jesus honored her. Jesus, Jesus honored her by praising her in front of Simon. The fact that her story is recorded in the Bible for us to refer to until today. It is a way of Jesus honoring her. And she is one of the persons that perhaps I will want to see when I go to heaven and I want to meet her. Luke chapter 7 verse 48. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. 
these four words are liberating. They are liberating not only to the woman, but also to us. My brothers and sisters, we have to hear these words again and again. Because we sin, we get our feet dirty, we get our hands dirty. And we need to constantly come back to God and hear Him assuring us, saying, your sins are forgiven. The Apostle John said it this way, if we say that we have not sinned, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Receiving forgiveness is a turning point in our lives. Lives are full of turning points because we make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, we have to make U-turns. And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you that at every U-turn sign, God is there to meet us and take us back into the right direction. I want to close with the words of Jesus in the same passage that was missing in uh, Luke chapter 7. I want to read to you Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And just close your eyes and just receive this, these words as if it is coming from Jesus. That Jesus wants you to give your trash or your burden to him this day. Let us come to God. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. My brothers and sisters, perhaps you have been hurt deeply by people. You are bitter. You carry resentment and bitterness. And it had caused you to have vision problems. You are unable to trust people because you are afraid to get hurt again. I urge you, my brothers and sisters, that you give that to Jesus today. You ask for healing of vision. You ask for healing of your heart. Or perhaps you are like the woman you have made mistakes. You have done things that you are not proud of. You wanted to go back and change things, but you cannot. And this thing comes back again and again to haunt you, to nag you. It comes to you relentlessly, waves upon waves. And sometimes, you are so burdened that you can't even sleep at night. Today, my brothers and sisters, you need to hear these four words or these three words. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Please know that Jesus meets you at the U-turn sign and saying, my son, my daughter, I am your turning point. A new and better life awaits you. God, you know exactly where we are today. You know our struggles. You know 
what we are carrying on our backs, even though it is unseen to many, but you see the burdens, you see the trash in our lives. Father, today we want to give that to you. We pray that, Lord, you will just lighten our burden. You just meet us at that turning point. And Father, we just want to be yoked with Jesus and we just want this new life that Jesus had promised us. We receive this and I'll pray and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just let me give you the benedic benediction before we end. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Sleep in thy presence, my life.